It's fall in eastern Massachusetts and busy season for beaver control expert Mike Callahan. The beavers are causing flooding to homes in the neighborhood as they prepare their food stores and habitat for the coming winter months. Today we're going to Carlisle, Massachusetts. A homeowner has experienced flooding of her basement because of a dam that the beavers built. A family of beavers has moved into the homeowner's backyard. With their powerful front teeth, they chop down trees and create dams, massive log and mud structures that block streams and cause extensive flooding to the surrounding area. Their aim is to create a deep pond that forms a protective moat around their dome-shaped home. But while these beavers are busy constructing their home, they're creating havoc in a neighbor's backyard. Mike's job is to drain the flooded property without destroying the beaver's habitat. It's really gratifying for me to be able to do this work because we're solving people's problems, but we're doing it in a way that is the most environmentally and humane uh, way possible. And I find that very rewarding because everyone benefits. Hi. I'm Mike Callahan. Homeowner Gabrielle Docterman is anxious for a humane solution. So let me show you the problem. There's always been water back here, but usually not this much. The dam has caused the water level to rise by four feet. It's already covered Gabrielle's backyard and is now just five yards from her house. This year, the water came up, flooded part of our basement, and really never went down. I don't want major flooding damage. I want to be able to resell my house someday. <laughs> If nothing is done to rectify the problem, the water will enter Gabrielle's house within the next five days. This would gradually keep rising and rising if uh, left to the, the beavers to own devices. ...are North America's largest rodent. With their large front teeth, a single beaver can gnaw through several trees in a night. Two waterproof flaps behind their teeth enable the beavers to chew even when underwater. The backed up water is now so deep, the only way for Mike to inspect the dam is by kayak. Unfortunately, we built houses and roads often near these low-lying areas, and so we often run into problems with uh, human habitation being affected by it. Wow, it is high up, isn't it? They can be up to a quarter mile long. Just a few yards away from the dam, Mike shows Gabrielle where the beavers are living. Yeah, that's a good-sized lodge. We built up this mound of mud and sticks and leaves, and they're living inside that. Softwood trees, the beaver's primary building material, are also their staple diet. And that's what all these sticks in the water here are. That's their food supply for the winter. So this is where they'll sleep during the day and at night come out to cut down more trees for food and to inspect and fix the dam. So they're in there right now? Yep. yep. Mike realizes he has a difficult job on his hands. There was a man-made spillway there that was probably where the beaver started building. It's probably about 250 feet long and four feet tall. So it's a substantial dam that's holding back a tremendous amount of water. Mike's challenge is to reduce the water level to protect Gabrielle's house without leaving the beavers homeless or without a food supply for the coming winter months. Next, agents race to stop the flood and outwit the beavers. I'm gonna secure it, and then I'm gonna build the dam up around it. Humane beaver control expert Mike Callahan is back at a home where a beaver's dam has flooded the backyard of a local resident. Mike and colleague Scott Bradley construct a 60-foot pipe that they'll insert through the middle of the dam to drain away the backed up water that's approaching the house. Once in place, the pipe should give quick results. Yeah, it's exciting. We're expecting to start seeing this pond level behind me start dropping and away from the homeowner's house. The beavers use the deep pond to store food during the winter months. 
The agents have to place the pipe at the correct height to reduce the water level, but at the same time keep the pond deep enough for the beavers to still store their food. The sound of running water triggers a response in the beavers to repair any holes in the dam. Mike positions the inflow end of the pipe 50 feet away from the dam. It disguises the flow of running water, so the beavers can't detect where the leak is coming from. They'll know that the water level's down, and they'll be checking their dam for leaks and putting mud and sticks on it, but it won't do any good because this pipe is sneaking the water. The agents start creating a hole on the downstream side of the dam. The next step is removing sticks, get a trench a little over a foot deep that's wide enough for our pipe to fit into. It's amazing how strong these beaver dams are. Without any tools, beavers just using their hands and their teeth, they weave these sticks together. All right, we're going to start opening up the dam, let some water through. Mike and Scott struggle to keep their balance in the strong current as the river drains through the opening of the dam. All right, we're good. We're good. After we put the pipe through, we're going to secure it, and then I'm going to build the dam up around it. They'll come tonight. They're going to build around the pipe, and they're going to do the rest of the work for us. heavy metal cage at the end of the pipe is designed to prevent the beavers from blocking it when they start to patch up any holes left by the agents. We're pretty much done. The uh, pipe's at the right level. Tonight the beavers will come out. Any small leaks we didn't get, they'll detect and probably plug up tonight. I'm happy with it. It came out very good. Water's gushing out of it. And this pond should keep dropping over the next week or so. And it looks pretty good. So it's a job well done. Beavers will still have enough pond. Um, the water will be away from the homeowner, and that's the goal. Homeowner Gabrielle Docterman is happy to see the immediate result. Very pleased. The water's already gone down, that tree over there. You can see where it was, so that's good progress. Hopefully it'll go down enough this fall that we won't have to worry about flooding our basement. With the water receding, Mike and Scott are pleased with their day's work. And as evening falls, they leave the finishing touches to the beavers. I think they'll think it's shoddy workmanship, but I do my best. They'll come out, they'll repair it, they'll, they'll be critics, but that's what they do and they're better at it than me.